call the uh, liquor control board to order. Um, and just so everybody understands, this has not, is not a select board meeting. So first up is public comment on anything not on the agenda for the liquor control board. Hearing none, we'll move to approval of the agenda. So moved. Aye. 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 And uh, then we'll move on to the business. Restarted it so. Okay. Um, if there's no Where's questions there? on any of those, we entertain a motion to move everything at once. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We'll now move into the regular select board that's meeting. I think you guys are here for a liquor license. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. That's done. Is it is Middle Branch on the list? Yeah. So yeah, we'll let the clerk's office know they're the conduit with DLC, and then the rest of the processing happens off in that direction. So, yeah. so yeah, I'll give. All right, everybody, we're having issues with the Zoom. We're going to try to get this up and running, but if not, I'm working on a workaround. My apologies there. Right. So we'll do the select board reorganization. Um, so I would like to nominate the new lady nomination. Yep. Okay. So I'd love to nominate Trini as a chair. Second. Any other nominations? All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Motion carries. And now for vice chair. I'll um, nominate Larry and for vice chair. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Enthusiastically. <laughs> And now we need a secretary. Which one's a very serious job. So weigh it carefully. You're often called on to do nothing at all. So the person that has to make sure Larry and Trini show up to the meeting. But if, yeah, if they, <laughs> they don't show up, <laughs> you're up. Uh, I'll nominate. The house, but without any authority. I'll nominate Stephanie to be secretary. <laughs> Do you accept? Sure. <laughs> you do get to okay. minutes if, if, if yes. somebody's not here. I could rock some minutes <laughs> for that. <laughs> Let's record it. So. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll go to public comment. This is for anything not on the agenda. Seeing them, move on to approval of the agenda. Second. Aye. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent calendar. This is a variety of meeting minutes and the warrants that have been approved for the last month. She had three sets of minutes in there. 
your regular meeting, the forum, and the public informational meeting from February. I'll move to approve the consent calendar. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Next up is our business, which is proposed changes to the land use regulations. The big takeaway from last time was to get you some versions that showed the proposed changes, the red line versions. And so we've provided all of that. So that's a handy way to see what's what in there. Those are all up on the website for anybody who's looking for them remotely. We didn't put it in your packets. We've been 130 pages with all of it, I think, um, just for those pieces. But if anybody wants a copy, we can do that. And then the idea being that we let you see those, have another conversation about those if you wanted to, and then um, you're still queued up to potentially hold the next and or final public hearing in April. Um, the 11th would be your meeting. We should have enough time to warn it for that, I believe. What's the date on that, the, the updated? Uh, on the public hearing or on the? No, the, the change in the, change in the, uh, the redlining one. Because I, I think I might have an old one. Yeah, these would have been posted in the last week and a half or so. Uh, 216 2024 is the date on the top of the full draft of the land use regulations with the red line. Yeah, 215. Has everybody gotten a chance to work their way through all of that? To a point where you're comfortable putting it out for public comment. Yeah. I have a question. Um, oh, there's a question. Uh, hang on a sec. I think they're going to come around to that. They're, they're going to do a little board stuff and then they'll open it up for questions. So just hang tight. It's about the land use regs, though. Is that? Yep. Yeah, we won't forget you. Just hang tight. Okay. We'll get that. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Yes, thank you. Um, Molly, have you had a chance to look at the land use spray yeah. and the changes and compare them and understand what they are? I know you've looked at most of it. There's no, got the, yeah, I just, I got the red light stuff the other night. Uh, yeah, it's a lot, but yeah. Did you want to sit down with somebody from the planning commission and walk through what the changes do or? Yeah, actually, that would be great if I could. Even Jeff or? Yeah. See two of them here, but Jeff might be a good one as both staff and former planning commissioner. Sure. Yeah, I can answer questions you have and go through that yeah. with you. Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. Um, Trini, you looked at the latest one. I made sure the did you pick up on that typo? Yeah, but I haven't gone through the latest one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I find any time. Um, um, I'm trying to find it right now just to make sure it's on the website. Question. Was it in the red line that it had the website? Actually, yeah. <clears throat> Do you remember which one it was? I forget now. It wasn't, but I'll go through it again before we um, the notice. Yeah. Okay. How about if we give everybody another week? And yep. then if anybody has any questions, raise them. If not, we'll advertise it on the next board meeting for the hearing. Okay. That'll give you enough time, Molly. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Going forward, um, the RACDC merchants row. So on the phone, we don't have a name, but you're up. Oh, Nancy Rice. Um, just want to make sure I'm understanding. It's a little hard to picture when I'm on my phone, but did you say there would be a public hearing sometime in the next few weeks? Yep, right now, April 11th would be the date, and that would be toward the beginning of the meeting, so around 5.30. And ask the public can ask questions and comment and go for it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can always submit questions to us ahead of time if you have any as well. I mean, we can help you work through those. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure there would be a, a public hearing with, with information available if anybody wants to they look it over and comment. So. Yeah, all the, all the proposed changes are available right off the home page of the website. It's the second post down, just under the picture of the metal on the right hand side. And if you want a paper copy, let us know. We get one printed out. Get that to you too. 
I did get, and I think it's very helpful to see it on paper. So if anybody's listening, like to see that and compare it with the um, say 145 day page document or something, I think that would be helpful for anybody who's interested in the topic. Yeah, uh, you can contact Jeff or stop in. We'll have a paper copy. We'll get a paper copy for you if you want. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments online? Nancy did. Nothing else? Yeah, two, six, one. Seeing none. Any questions here? Only just confirming the latest copy. Yes, and the latest copy is posted on the front page of the Randolph Vermont website. Okay. Trevor just right walked us side. through exactly how to find it. Beautiful. <laughs> you were so busy in the front page is an easy link, <laughs> uh, which is a challenge on that website. So. <laughs> yes. All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the RACDC first Friday. They've asked for that to be continued to April. Yep. So on to. Um, providing initial ARPA obligation criteria feedback. Yeah, we've set this up as a running item. 2024 is the year to obligate back in, I don't even remember how long ago you got the projects that were submitted to the committee. You got an early version of the town list. So we still have those. The task before us is to set what your criteria, your process is going to be to evaluate those and make obligation decisions. So this was just a, I think I referenced last time, we're probably gonna keep this on here until we develop that and shift into obligation mode. Um, so it's if you wanna talk about any criteria tonight, just don't wanna lose it. Um, Cause this is, the, this is the year to finally get those obligated. Um, I think one of the things we should be looking at with some of these projects is um, if it's an investment or a purchase that we can make that will either save us money in the long run or make jobs better or do something that improves the work that we're doing. And the other thing I don't want to see us do is invest in something that's going to give us a larger investment needed at a later date. The, uh, a set one and done so we're not setting ourselves up in future years to have to come up with a big chunk of money and one of the pieces that's being kicked around right now is um a piece of equipment that's needed um and whether that should be you know an item and i would say if it's the piece is an excavator is that one of the funding sources do we finance it how do we pay for it and I think it's a perfect project to consider under ARPA because we're going to get a lot of that money back through grants by not having to hire a contractor and we're going to get some of the payroll for our highway workers back through grants. So it kind of has that capacity to, to help us financially and help them do their job. That to me is an appealing project to do it. Um, but just something to think about if we're working our way through them. That's something where we're going to pay 10% of something and then still try to have to figure out the other 90. That scares me. I don't think we have the 90. <laughs> but wasn't the one that I forget exactly the one you're talking about, but I feel like one of them was kind of it paying for the match of something, like a larger amount of money, I thought. Yeah, we have some of those in there too, which, which I think I is think good as long as it's going to pay for the project and not yeah. set us up to pay, you know, if the grant's only for 20% yeah. of the project yeah. and we're paying a match on it. Because I was going to say, still got to find more money. I'd say I'm really for using it for match to leverage other opportunities. But yeah, I don't agree as long as they're sustainable. Any other thoughts on? Criteria that we should be working on. I was saying we're gonna have. Did you have some list? Which one is gonna? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got like that. I was looking through the list. Uh, 
on the list here, you have higher energy for you to for random. Check. <laughs> <laughs> I've been long enough. Some of this list just kind of uh, happened. It takes a care of itself. Um, all right. Well, we'll have to figure that out pretty quick. Yeah. Because that'd be good to move those. Well, for next time, maybe pull all of the projects you received, made a note for that. Maybe at least get you a draft. If there's some frameworks that some others have used, throw those in there for you to look at. And then maybe we can come out of next time with sort of a draft. Here's how we want to do it process. And then that might give us a, here's the timeline on which we're going to do it and, and put us in a good shape to move through that. I think sure. once you get into it, then you have until the end of the calendar year, but I don't know what you're going to need that once you, if you got a good process and a good matrix, say, you might get there pretty fast with most of it, at least there might still be stuff we need more information on, stuff that we've already achieved or done through other means, or stuff that maybe just doesn't fit and we have some left over to, to try to figure out. But Yeah, some of these things on the art the committee list, I mean, they list rolled around off senior center sidewalk and downtown pedestrian improvements, which we're looking at is a uh, um, uh, Kathleen. Planning grant. Do we have the full list? So if some of the things the committee put forward are already taken care of, we can. Um, I can forward it from the right now. Yeah, <laughs> grab that for you too. I can go through each of those, and even on the towns list, I think there's some stuff that we've done. I figured out a different path too, so maybe we'll even sort of note. It's like a got FEMA ash in there somewhere. Right. Which we're not. We still we haven't hit the. 111 million yet, so we're not at a 90 10 split. Actually, might have been in the meeting about that today. Wait, wait, can you say that again? Sorry, we're not at 111 million yet as a state, so we don't get a 90 10 split. We're at a 75 25 still, so it makes a big difference in how much we've got. Are we close? Hey, okay. should we knock some stuff over? <laughs> we're not close. To that. <laughs> we will be, but the project steps aren't. It takes a lot of time to crank through the yeah. bureaucracy of FEMA. <laughs> no. <laughs> it makes it, what, 12.5% for us then? If it's at um, 25. At 75, yeah. Yeah. So that kind of middle tier. Otherwise, we drop down to whatever the other one is. Roughly, so we do we know roughly like that amount? One of the things we'll have by the time you're making decisions um, based on our conversations with FEMA about how to proceed. So the North Randolph Road Bridge is kind of the biggest hanging unknown cost for the full term replacement. But by the time you get to the decision making, we'll have had to go through the RFP process, figure out what the cost is, what that project looks like. And so we'll know what that cost is. And that's kind of the last real big piece to plug into what we're going <coughs> to Most of what we've, most of our damage was fixed within those weeks after that because of the type of damage it is. So we have very few that are still open it's that one and then a couple of the slope stabilization ones which the cost could change on as well but um so north randolph road for there lincoln Hub would be one um we're gonna come out and do a site inspection again next week so and then december will be in the mix as well we'll have to match that so that december event um total cost of our response for that was less yeah we won't get anywhere near hitting 90 on that but but we're probably still talking 15, 20,000 would be our match based on how much we spent on material time, labor, equipment. It was a hundred and twenty-five dollars to $150,000 event for us. Um, is the state going to take the lead on Lincoln Ave? We'd like them to. Um, trying to get somebody with mitigation because otherwise it could be very narrow about where that culvert now daylights a few feet earlier than expected. Um, and they pinned it in right to where that little sliver is. So we won't even be able to armor behind it at this point um, or downstream of it. So it could be very narrow, but it does offer some kind of protection in that space, at least to that culvert and where it's at least encroaching on the road, still a little bit distance, but. Okay. Comments and criteria. A little bit off there, but not bad. <laughs> that did that the question. Um, I'm not aware of what funds have been taken, you know, what ARPA funds have been used. So I would, I don't know if the town knows that. We do. Where is that located? 
What do you mean? Where is it located? Where can I look for it? Uh, well, we've referenced it in a few other places. In I think the packets that we handed over the list originally, there's the hundred thousand dollars for the Orange County Parent Child Center, and yeah. the rest of it was for police startup. Yeah, I knew about that. Yeah, that's it. So those numbers are in there. And they haven't. The police one hasn't moved since then, nor would the OCPCC one. It's actually easier to say the full name. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more specifically where I can find it. Should be, I forget what the meeting date was, but if you send me an email, I can even just send you the numbers back tomorrow. That'd be good. Thank you. Yeah. I want to say, it. may I make a comment also on the ARPA? Um, and this is maybe primarily for the newer members of this board who um, may not have been here when, when there was a committee of, of citizens who got together to try to solicit um, proposals for that ARPA money. And we came up with a, a pretty robust um, evaluation <coughs> criteria. And, and I think as a, as a board, we would ask, as a committee, we would ask the board to look at that evaluation criteria we came up because it's pretty comprehensive um, and it reflects the the thoughts of a lot of people in the community on what how that money should be used. So as you're you clearly you obviously have the authority to do what you want with that money. We were just a, an advisory committee, but um, I think as you come up with projects, if you try to apply those criteria, you're in some way sort of honoring the, the intent of the people who were. were Trying to trying to gain um, get get uh, input from, from people in the community. So I'd ask you to mm -hmm. look at those. There's four criteria, a bunch of sub criteria underneath them, and it got to things like the bang for the buck. Does this leverage additional funds and things like that? And three is the people that are on it. The ARC committee are here. Um, but that that was the the ones that you evaluated were the ones that were solicited. They weren't the town projects, too, right? Correct. We never saw those town right. projects. Okay. The other, the other, this is the last thing I want to say about our, our work is while we got thirty five different proposals and we we came up, we we ranked them and came up with the top ten, it did seem to us that there were, for instance, a lot of proposals for specific projects that had to do with walkability or bikeability or recreation. And, and we thought it was less important for the select board to pick one of those individual projects, but more important to recognize that there is a sort of category of interest. Um, and so maybe you don't pick any of those specific projects that were recommended, but you use some of those funds for walkability, bikeability, and that sort of thing. And I thought that's, that, that would honor the, the, uh, um, the hopes of people in the community. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Yeah, uh, we'll look for more on that in April. Um, appointment to boards, committees, and commissions. Sorry, we're multitasking here. <laughs> Going way back to the fall, you approved our participation in a lead service line inventory. In order to get the funds flowing, we've got it. It's a hundred percent coverable. We have to do a loan agreement with the state. So Emory was kind of have to come sign on behalf of the treasurer. We need your signatures after that. We can get it all in. Cool. Let's well, start the reimbursement process. Thank you. That's perfect. Yeah, right. We have copies for you here. Um, Larry, do you have your cell phone with you? We can scan it soon. I do. Why? Well, I would take a picture of these pages of this committee list and we'd have it working. Oh, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> yes, that would be great. I can, if you send me a text, I can actually bring it up on my computer. That'd be great. So we're working to update this throughout the day. There's some that are on there. This is pulled from, we've had the annual report in the past. Um, I'm going to hang on to Larry's copy here. Um, so some of these you obviously don't appoint. The first page are the elected officials. We updated the terms where we knew them. Um, there's still some that we've got to fit in. And then the one I would point out on page one is that um, one of you usually serves as a liaison to the budget committee. That one's listed there as well. The page two of this are the... Uh, annual appointments to positions. So they're less about boards, committees, and commission, and more about who serves as the E911 coordinator, uh, animal control officer, emergency management coordinators, um, health officer, tree warden, those types of things. And so we've updated the list so it reflects everybody who's in those roles currently. Some of those folks probably wouldn't mind 
Not being the delinquent tax collector, not to name names. <laughs> and having a few of those other roles, but it makes sense to hold on to them for now. You and then we'll start popping in, Larry. Yeah. And then when you get to the next two pages, that's where we get into the committees. And we've tried to match up the terms. We got some new information from the Conservation Commission on they've essentially got four members stepping off. They have a full slate of recommendations for you. Those are the ones highlighted in yellow. We do have to assign terms. I'll go back through my email. I think I have something from Jessamine that might help us sort through that. Um, but they're there and we took out anything that was um, currently sort of defunct or underutilized. So that's why you don't see anything for energy because I think we need to have a conversation about how to fully jumpstart what that's going to be. Same thing with the uh, design review advisory commission hasn't been put into practice for a while, but we should figure out what it is, who's on it and all that. So we've tried to keep it to the simpler ones um, that are up. In some cases, we know people want to be reappointed and some we haven't heard or we haven't had a chance to reach out. Um, but you also have, um, you can send an ex officio member to conservation East Valley group I haven't really done one with DRB because they're quasi judicial. It's a little different uh, in terms of their taking in applications and, and and figuring out, you know, from a regulatory standpoint. Um, I don't know if you ever had. Did you ever have a board liaison? You're it's a different animal. I'm sorry, I, I was actually not listening to. It's okay. That was brilliant. <laughs> Just hold on to the last part. <laughs> forget the first part. You're listening. Was it DRB? DRB. Yeah. I think Tom Mears did. Was Tom? Yeah, uh, I apologize. Yeah, because he was interested in learning about it and whatnot. So he he was yeah. on it, but not. Oh, we're talking about liaisons. Is that yeah. Right? Oh, um, no, there's not been a liaison for a long time. I'm trying to think. I think Trini, the last time there was liaison, it was when you were the chair of the DRB, and then you were on the select board. I think that was the last time I can recall the select board member. Yeah, but um, I think last year Tom jumped on. I don't know if he ever showed up or not, but he was. Yeah, we put him there for numbers. Board. Yeah. We could use members to that body. <laughs> All right. Let's start. Uh, so I don't know if you this. want to go through the appointments. You want to do the boards and committees. Most of them are one year terms. Um, some like Conservation Commission, you have a little different, but you get into rec advisory, water, wastewater. You're into single year terms. All Energy right, committee. Let's, uh, let's start right on page one. Larry, do you want to stay as the ex officio member of the budget committee? Oh, really do. Erica was doing it, I think, before she left too. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't been on the budget committee in a long time. <laughs> I think Erica briefly took over and then before she moved. That, so that, that might be right. So who wants to be the ex officio of the budget committee? Molly, that's something you'd be interested in. Sure. Okay. So we have to do like the appointments and stuff, or can we just do it all? We're going to do it all as one. Well, it's usually once, once a month, not every month. Uh, I'm going to guess that a lot of these we don't have much say. EC Fiber, delegates <coughs> and representatives. Don't think send us a thing once a year at some point that we have to fill out and we do the appointments at that point. Yep. Yeah. This is we just on. gave you the full list. Um, emergency management director and coordinators. We need somebody who's going to be pretty active in that. We don't have that right now. How do we go about appointing somebody new without them being present? Well, <laughs> we just, uh, <laughs> this won't be our only shot at this. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're just going to hit the big ones and the ones that we know. And then it will actually come up on the agenda for the next two or three months while we find people and get them all plugged in. We also like to give some of these committees a chance to tell us. And if we have more than one person applying, we like them to weigh in on it. Doesn't mean we'll always do what they want, but it's nice to hear what they think, how they think it's reaching a balance in their group. So that's just uh, an area that we ought to be looking at because we're. A little weak in that area. Health officer, we appoint um, at the state's process time. Uh, local emergency planning committee. 
if possible, it might be nice at some point to link the EMD, EMC pieces with those pieces. Yeah, so say Matt Fordham doesn't live in Vermont anymore. So, so at a minimum, in state? There probably ought to be looking presence. for in people for the Mountain Alliance rep. Is that still you? Still me. It says temp after it. Is that a hint? Uh, more wishful thinking, but I know. <laughs> How the garbage is are for the foreseeable future. So. All right. Um, Although we, we functionally do run that, so there would be room for a board member to serve as the board representative of Mount Alliance, and I would still get to keep that prestigious title of garbage czar. So if you are interested. Anybody interested in being on the board of the Mountain Alliance? Can you tell us more about it? The, the garbage district. group. Um, yeah, I mean, it's our solid waste district. <laughs> yeah, we're functionally the head. It's us, Northfield, um, Brookfield, Braintree, Feel like I'm forgetting someone in the mix. Um, Roxbury. Roxbury, yeah. And um, there's not a lot for anybody on the board to do. There might be. We haven't actually had a meeting in in a while. Um, Casella is our contractor. They run most of the operating stuff, most of the permitting stuff. Household hazardous waste days get coordinated and communicated. Um, and then we make sure that through that contract with Casella that we're appropriately taking care of anything from solid waste to the hazardous waste days to recycling. In those pieces so it's not quite as exciting as being board secretary <laughs> as they got much more responsibility but they're pretty close right now so you don't you know you think about that one trevor is, is the mountain alliance isn't it mostly about the household hazardous waste isn't that the by far the biggest piece of that that's pretty much what it does. And then we operate the transfer stations through that contract as well. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. But like the stump dump, for example, falls under our old landfill permit. And we manage that. So even that piece is separate. That's crystal, that, believe it or not. All right. We'll come back to that one. We'll be looking for a stage coach. I, I don't think we've had one for as long as I've been here. So Bruce Tucker talked about it at town meeting. You should be interested. Um yes. Probably should talk about that. <laughs> Once we've got a list of the ones you maybe want to advertise and see who's interested, we can do that too and could throw that one in there. Uh superintendent of cemeteries. Welcome that partner. So it was, but since Randy left, it's been vacant. Harold functionally does it, but. Probably have to look into what that role is and whether the guy that took over over there is the right person for it or if it's something else. Town engineer, we talked about hiring somebody to do that function, like a firm. Town service officer. Do we have these positions anymore? Town sewage officer. Uh, they think they still exist in statute. Certainly, the service officer does. Hmm. Hasn't been filled for a while. It's a weird little offshoot of. I mean, the health officer ends up covering a lot of what that would be just through the interactions with the folks, and so this might be somebody who connects folks to. Um, other social service agencies that are out there if they're having some sort of issue um, and or through just general contact with us. Um, this is a 19th century holdover. <laughs> yeah. You take this roll, we'll get you a snow roller and you can help us with the winter games. All right, we should probably confirm that Sam and Jeff want to continue. They've done such a good job with it. I didn't want to ask them <laughs> put them in. Uh, two rivers reps. We'll reach out to Chris to see if he's still interested. We could use an alternate. Um, it would be nice to have it be a board member or playing active planning commissioner, active board member in one or both of those roles. Because otherwise we lose. And it's not a knock. Towns do this all the time. That's where you start. And then as you get it there, it's whoever's interested and available. So you lose a little bit of connectivity when you hit that point. And 
we've got a good dynamic with them. We're still pretty well connected, but it would be nice to have somebody in their policy making process that's also in ours. I'd be interested in being the alternate, at least, and possibly if there's no one else to do that. Primary. Does that work with staff? I think it's okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So you you'll Jeff. Yeah, I would happily be the alternate. The alternate of Jeff's the primary. Well, maybe we confirm if Chris is interested still. If he's not, put Jeff in as the primary and Matt is in the alternate. Then you wouldn't have to be the alternate to the alternate. You could be the alternate. Oh, really? Good. Yeah, please look it up. <laughs> yeah. It's got promoted. Yeah. Stay around. We got a few others. <laughs> Um, I can um, stay in the tack role too. I mean, well, uh, should we work John into that? I'm trying. Yeah, that's what well, it yeah. is in most places. Yeah. Most towns. And that would be a nice, because of the topics covered, that would be nice. Maybe he pals along for one and see what he can do. Um, ambulance. Yeah, Steve Webster stepped off as our primary representative toward the end of the calendar year of 23. So this would be a good there, one. Is there anybody on the board that wants to be the town rep on the ambulance? That's your interest, doesn't it, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> I we haven't got we haven't gotten to my committees yet. I'm hoping to keep my brain full with those two. Uh, I don't want to do the ambulance. Come on. We need to find something. Mm -hmm. Zoning is pretty well set. All right. Conservation Commission. What do we have? We have some folks that haven't so, confirmed. Yeah. Are you losing Jessamyn, um, Courtney Gately, Jeff there, and Harrison Drapo are the ones I think that are stepping off. The commission forwarded us the list of names with an alternate included. Let me see if I can find some term info as well. It was a mixture of links. We so, were considering Sue and uh, he actually goes by Bob, but Rob, it's really funny. Robert goes by Bob. Um, and then we didn't actually appoint anyone. Yeah, you held it. Is a uh, are Jason and Ken looking to to be members? So there's one two year term, and there's ha Ken Hafner's listed next to that in the email, and the others would be for a three year term with one alternate. So Ken was the one year you said. Ken would be the two year. Everybody else, so Sue, Jason, Rob, and wouldn't Rob. But I'll be three, and then Tom would be an alternate. Anybody have any concerns with any of those? I don't know who Jason is. I know Bob. That's too very happy with Bob. And then they were really excited about Sue Paul being on there. Well, these have come from the committee, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm guessing they're pretty excited about all of them. Well, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. No concerns on any of them? Nobody else is itching for the job and wants to compete for it? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, Design Review Advisory Commission. We've just blanked that out for now. We go back, figure out its origins, its roots, its needs before we put anybody on it. It's been dormant for. This is basically a design control district in Randolph Center. It was driven by members of Randolph Center at the time. It a lot of it came about with um, a couple of projects. The main one that drove it was McDonald's. And somebody didn't like the yellow eyebrow over the order box. So is an eyebrow about what that is? I thought it was. <laughs> It'd be. I thought it was a mustache. Now, aren't you? I thought it was a mustache. But... <laughs> so, well, you can't own the eyebrow. Though. It was some of it was that, and some of it was the exit four stuff. 
that they didn't they didn't want any development in extra four and so they wanted to design control we started to control what it looked like you know uh, that hotel came a long way after and there was nobody on the committee to do anything at that point but it's never been fully staffed there's never been enough volunteers there's I think the only project that I know of that went through that group was the McDonald's. Mm -hmm. uh, they wait, they weighed in on the hotel. They had some comments on the hotel, yeah. I think. Who are they? That, that committee. There was only like one or two by then, right? Who was on one committee? The first John Bowman. Um, I can't remember who else. Um, uh, he lives right up next to uh, the Furnace Street there. I can't remember his name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it and they got really active. Yeah, with the McDonald's because they came to the select board even asking us to. Yeah, they've been really quiet. So yeah. Yeah. We didn't like the yellow. Mm. That wouldn't have anything to do with with what we might do like, be doing in in terms of sidewalks and walkways. This, this, is on this was there. on they want you know at one point they wanted every house white they wanted them set back a certain distance everybody had had sidewalk in front of their house there was like there was this whole window style yeah. there was a whole big plan they brought to the planning commission back when I was on that and the BRB and we were just like not in Randolph that just doesn't fit it was quite a process mm -hmm. Which that's what that group is. And that's what they do is three the work. and they're advisory to the TRB. Yeah, so TRB would like so the TRB would have to vote to dissolve it. Not the select board does, but it would be up to the you know it might be worth a conversation with the DRB, flip it to them and be like, you know, do you get any value out of this? Is this really a a necessary group to or can it be done by the DRB? My guess is it can be done by the deer. So it looks like on the DRB we have one position in the bow. You got to check with Dan to make sure, but um, I haven't heard. There's the change in chair, though. You're not chair of the RV anymore, right? Oh, it's not formal yet, but okay. at our next meeting. I'll nominate Dan who's willing to be the chair. He's not a member, so he can't unless he comes. He decides he wants to re up and he'll be and he would be he's not a member. member? It, he is he expired, but he's got to advise that he wants to stay. Okay, we'll make sure he does, he does want to stay. Make sure he knows that. Well, we can just take your word for it. So, you, the chair will take your word. For you it. could always appoint him, and then if he doesn't want to, he leaves. Kind of like, and then you'll be able to appoint him okay. at your next meeting instead of waiting. You want off that quickly? <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> well, you're just not your chair. You're not going to have to be there, right? You're, you're, you're staying on. You're staying on. Not yeah, there. I'm just going to put time to the planning commission. So. Do we know if he if that's a three year? Those are all threes. Mm. Is what's listed. So you go up to twenty seven now. Then. Yep. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> and we have no alternates on that currently. I don't think we do. The space for three, I think. Three alternates. Um, and then the question of whether anybody wants to be an ex officio member. You can go, you can participate in the conversations, but you don't have a vote. I can do that. Planning <laughs> commission. <laughs> So it needs some help. Yeah. Which one are we on? Planning Commission. Um, and Matt and Matt Morowski is on it, but we voted him on, but he's not this right. Yeah, and and I'm I am the chair of the planning commission. Do you have a vice chair, Larry? Um I, Jeff, didn't we? Is Jeff still there? We yes, I am. I don't. I thought we had a conversation where we probably we thought we did not need a vice chair, and I would handle most of the administrative duties for that, as far as warning the meeting and writing minutes. Um, but I don't know if that's a legal setup for the committee or not. So, 
But I, do you recall that conversation where I think? I, I, I thought we had started a conversation about having a vice chair, but maybe we got off track and didn't didn't finish. I, but I, I my memory is not clear. You'd have to redo them anyway, right? Yeah. Your first meeting after town meeting day, you'd have to reorganize and revote. Okay. So you can pick one up then. We could do that. Um, but we need to get you some more members. I believe that with with me being in the chair slot, we have one opening. Yep. But we don't really... Am I a grad map list or am I a staff representative staff. Grad fishing member? Or am I a voting member of that? So, no. No. Yeah. 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 Is Larry oh. yeah. Larry's ex officio, so he's not voting either. Yeah, two vacancies. Wait a second. Something's one, two, one, two three. There's a I believe it's a seven member commission and there's only six um positions listed in addition to the ex officio position. Yeah. So I think I think if you if I'm if I'm in the in the chair spot. And we at our at a recent select board meeting, we appointed um, Matt Morawski to the board. That would fill up the six that we have shown here. And there's one additional slot that's not on the uh, on our list that we need to fill. Um, you're you're ex officio, and then there's seven. No, I'm I'm on the board. <laughs> Because I took over, I took over for Perry, who was on the board. I don't know. I don't know why it's listing me as ex officio here. That that was never the case. But you can't vote. You can't vote as a board member, though. Are you sure? Because I thought that that was not. So can learn about. We'll uh, sort that out. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Yeah, we'll we'll need to figure that out because. Um, We're either looking for one or two people. Yeah, and boy, that's okay. That's going to be interesting because, okay. Yeah, we'll have to figure that out. Can I ask us another question? Yeah. Being new. Um, do all board members have to be on a board committee or commission? Okay. There's um, some of them have a slot that somebody's yeah. on and some of them don't. Okay. And the committee, we just find somebody that wants to be on that committee, but it doesn't mean that you have to. That you have to. Okay. The number of committees has also shrunk in the last three years, too. So some of the dance spots that were open before aren't there, like okay. capital budgeting, arts and culture. Right now, energy's defunct functionally. Um, yeah, there are yeah, some I'd, other I'd actually could be there, could not be. There. <laughs> um, we'll yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was. I actually think that having an energy committee, having an energetic energy committee, would be really important. It's pretty much a standard town committee that are all over the state, and um, somebody agrees we, with you. What's that? Somebody here agrees with you. <laughs> 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 and um, and I was. I was I was I was really hoping that um, we'd have a select board member who would be a part of that committee and help revive it. Well, your wishes are coming true. <laughs> so I got a running that... list of spots to advertise, and so we can do like we need at least three members to that. There's just five total, and there were two that were appointed. Uh, so we... Jerry Ward is interested, and Jerry's interested. Back. Yeah, so we'll we'll at least advertise three. I would be on that also, but can I vote as a staff person or is that another advisory? You'd have to be oh. appointed to be a voting member and it wouldn't be prohibited given the advisory nature of it. It's just a practice thing mm -hmm. for us. If you're going to staff it, then as a practice thing, you shouldn't also vote. But So we should get some applications in? For I that? think if we could do five and have it staffed as needed that puts us in a pretty strong spot if where we are to get stuff done is we need a fifth then maybe that's when we look i might consider it 
I mean, I picked up two. See, we're two thirds of the sixty-seven percent of the way there. Send in your email. <laughs> yeah, just email. We'll collect them all and. If we're reviving it, I have a new one. You already got put on. We were worried. You were worried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't say no fast enough. <laughs> so you'll we'll advertise the energy committee. Yeah. And get folks. Um, Alyssa wants to be on that. Jerry Ward wants to stay on it. Um, and we'll have staff support. Mm -hmm or appointed depending on what we get for membership interest. Yep. So that, okay. Uh, recreation committee. Do we know that these four on here want to come back? I think so. Brian and Corey have an X at the end of the review though. Silent X. <laughs> That's a bit of a silent Z. <laughs> yeah. Your silent letters right here, folks. And you want to stay on that one, Stephanie? Yes. Okay. So we'll advertise for more on that committee. Yeah, we'll yeah. advertise for at least two. Who's currently on that committee? Ryan, I heard. Uh, Tanya Pierce, uh, Ron Barry, Fenton, and Chelsea Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, water, Reese Water. Still on this one, Larry? Yes. Yes, yeah, so we've got a really good group. And um, we're missing Jessamine from the from the list of current members. Because I do believe it's a seven member committee and we're all and we're full right now. Although I do want to, I do need to check in with Mariah to see if she wants to stay on the committee. She hasn't attended a meeting in quite some time. Um, we have to have a police services committee. I just to stay on here for now. Let me figure it out. Um, there's a Miss Randolph. That's on there. I I wasn't ex officio on that one last year. Through there, go. That one's open. We don't need somebody on that one. That's a if you want, but they can report to us quite often. So yeah, we all stay in tune. Yeah. We kind of walked through it. Um, anybody have any other names that came to mind or anything they'd like to see different? These value group has a lot of 2024 and I don't know if it ends, they're good until the end of this year. They're good. They're all, yeah, just all staggered. Gotcha. Uh, they would have terminated in 24. So they're done as of town meeting day. Oh, okay, that was my question. Okay, so they have to renew this. I saw their agenda the other day. Had um, checking on who wanted to be members. So, so um, there could guess. be a new list coming from them that we would have to look at. Cool. Okay. Do we have any other? These are groups out there. No, because we've we lost a few over the last couple of years with energy being down and. No capital that got rolled into budget committees workflow and then arts and culture pulled itself down basically. Economic development, same thing too. Um, so we had more, but are you gonna add the police service committee to like this year right now? We can. I mean the conversation for the board will be what do you want it to become? Where are we at? What do you want it to become? We've got to look at a different charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of what was in the original third. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah. What does the new charge look like? What are, do we need that committee? And if so, what do we need it to do? Yeah. And um, kind of what's the assignment there? And it's kind of I talked about a little bit too. Um, 
And how she's trying to kind of push forward with some of the mental health services nurses in our community, how that looks and supports the police. So that may be something that could be helpful to keep pressure on and keep eyes on um, if it's done in a well. It's a, uh, a different mix of people. Yeah. So, it, you know, is that a town committee that does that or is that a working group that supports Scott that does that? Because that, to me, feels more like a Clara Martin Center taking the a little more active role and sure you're probably trying to function yeah trying to connect those pieces i think um yeah. there, there's definitely could be some good to come of it of just a lot of people space to bring ideas and work on things that might be helpful for scott and that's charge it can be a town committee you need to write up a charge, you know, what they're going to do, what that looks like, why that comes into the town versus under something else. Mm -hmm. It does. You know, some of what we heard in the food services stuff was that people wanted this other whole support system built out there that was outside of law enforcement. Right. And I think that, you know, then you got to look at is that a town function or is that a Claire Martin function is that whose function is that? And that definitely a group that could be put together. The question is, is that a soul board point group or is that a what that looks like? Well, there is already an individual. There's the um I don't think it's specific to brand off of Kristen Chandler and I think Neil might even be on it. They meet the Merrill had a did you read that article? It may be a not a selection topic. It may be a social service topic. You know, there's a group, there's a few different groups that get together on social service issues and whatnot. It may be pulling some of them into a bigger conversation. It'd be, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what Scott would think if it would be helpful for the department, what it would look like if it were, or if it's something else. And you're saying it's not quite town function anymore. I just don't know. I, it depends what you're, what you set up your charge as. You know, like, what that looks like. You know, I haven't put any thought into it, so it'd be. I just know that when we were going through the police services stuff, it really was kind of a. There was almost this law enforcement and supporting law enforcement, but the, the help that was wanted was after they were done with that right right like how do you take that person who's who scott's group is done with and whatnot and they've gotten the medical attention and whatnot they need and give them the supports they need to move forward and it's making that connection that i think is where it seemed like the system was broken but i don't know who's who you bring to the table to get that connection made because i thought we had the right people at the table in some of those discussions, but I didn't hear much interest in right. stepping up and, and right. doing that role. Yeah. So could this committee then be one of those people that would be the best stepping stone of pushing the town connection to that? Um yeah, but I think the town, you know, what's the town's role in that? Right. We know that's it's you got to make that connection to why that's a town function in in what you put for a charge for that meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, it feels more like the state has identified Clara Martin Center as the regional mental health provider, okay. right? And and we we saw the weakness every time they came to the table to, to meet with us in the police services, but I don't. It felt to me like it's the state's job to get Claire Martin Center to step up and provide the service they needed to, and that that was coming with the two person response. And right. not, I just don't. It's a tough one because it's a you got a weak link there. Yeah. And but is it the town's job to step up and pick up the part of the of that weak link? I don't know. 
I don't think it is. I think it's our job to influence them to do their job or who's funding them to get them to do their job. I have a comment, but I don't know how we how we right? Like we don't have a social mm -hmm. service department in town here. We really would want to. That's why I'm under I'm just talking the budget for that one. Imagine managing that one. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. I think it's Clara Martin. I'm a nurse practitioner, so I've done a lot of counseling and things, but but uh, I think it's Clara Martin's thing, but I think the town is part of it because meetings I've gone to, the town meeting and all that. Uh, talking about the police force in general, and uh, a lot of people were talking about we need first responders, including the police or those people that are part of the police department or relegated to taking calls that are issues with mental health. We thought that I thought that they would be some kind of relationship that they would be somebody on call that the police department would call and if it was you know, relevant. That's the way I saw it. And that's what I think a lot of people saw it. But I think it's up to, I think it's about, about to Claire Martin. And I'm not sure that they're going to go get, do anything. This is where I'm coming from. Unless, unless they get pushed to do it. Yeah, I think there's two different pieces there. One of them, is what happens at a scene with law enforcement. That one I agree that we need to do something for some type of relationship with somebody to right. provide that immediate service. The other one isn't. It's our law enforcement folks are done. They've left the scene and this person has gone to the hospital for an overdose. Then whose job is it to help them get the services they need from that point forward? The hospital. Well, it's almost like you need a care coordination kind of. You need, you know, but is that a town function? Well, right. I I don't know if that's a town function. I think that's you know, as a provider, if I'm in the emergency room for providing healthcare, then it's my job and the social service job of the people at the hospital to get this person connected. That's their job. But that's where we heard repeatedly the system was falling down. Well, it is. Right. So it's, the question is, but if you were going to put a group together to try to solve that next problem, is it the town's job to put that committee together and work on that issue? Is it Claire Martin Center's job? Is it Gifford's job? Like, who pulls that group together to do that next? I think there should be someone that goes to this part of part of the a bigger group from from the town. But I don't think it's a town's job. I think it's I think it's Claire Martin particularly and the hospital getting together with uh, some kind of mental care facility that's outpatient, that's emergent, those kind of things. They need to come with a plan. That's my opinion as a provider of healthcare. Yeah, I think we've got to look at like what is the next role for that police services committee. Like, is there a is there more to do and there is on what that of what the actual policing in Randolph looks like there's some more to do with that I think there's also some benefit to having some type of committee to work with Scott on other issues that they come up with but I don't know that those are the same group of people yeah yeah I think whoever's on it right now might not continue on once we change the charge for sure yeah like Neil some grams and sauce I just have to bring him up real. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to put some thought into that one and what we do. Okay. Onward and upward. Onward. All good, Larry. Oh yeah, just um while um while we were discussing that, I did look at the Vermont statutes online and it doesn't doesn't appear to be any um restriction on who can be on the planning commission. So I mean, I don't know if we want to look into it some more, but I, I read through the relevant sections and I didn't see anything that mentions um, anything about select board members not being able to be 
on um, on a planning commission. They don't even have to be uh, all residents. It just has to be a majority. It's interesting. All right, let's uh, move forward. Always forward, never straight. <laughs> um, discuss town meeting. This is just a general check in if there's anything you want to cover about the, the process, the day, things to keep in mind for next year, what worked, what didn't. If you want to just think about it, we've got some time before we have to do the next one. So uh, while it's fresh in your mind, if there's anything that you'd like to see a little differently. Um, my my big takeaway. Oh, Go ahead, Larry. Okay. Um, my, my my big takeaway was that um, it seems pretty seemed pretty clear that we should be um, starting to, to to think about a charter for our, our town, um, and so that we we can address some of the issues that have, that have come up around town meeting. That seems like that would be a really good thing for us to start talking about. For other reasons too, and I think we have lots of good reasons, as Trevor has alluded to in the past, um, but did make me think about that in particular. Charter votes are Australian ballot too. So you think about participation? Yeah, I couldn't have been more disappointed with such a small margin, but of people honestly thinking it's not a good idea to let other people have a say in town issues. That just blows my mind. I just really struggle with that one. Um, people that voted, were they supposed to be registered voters? Were, yeah. Because uh, two people at first told me that they weren't registered voters, but voted. And it's the moderator's job to make sure they're voting the way they, you know, the right people are voting. But there was a few things that happened in that meeting that were not kosher in the way that it was run. You never go back and take up topics after you're done with them. That shouldn't have happened. There shouldn't have been some of the discussion items shouldn't have been allowed. No offense, but you shouldn't be in the town meeting trying to get people to vote for you. There was a bunch of things that she should have like, if she's going to run it the way she needs to run the meeting, she should have run it that way. And it just was so many things that I was just like, oh my gosh. If somebody wants to challenge it, they got plenty of ins. The challenge what went down that day in that meeting, but fortunately, I don't think anybody there was no big burning topics that anybody was gonna pick apart. But I'm uh, surprised there was a lack of JPs as well, too. The story was not even barely present. Yeah. But Right up and see what happens. I just have one comment. I was at the meeting. Um, I don't think it really makes a difference whether it's on a Saturday or Tuesday. I think we got more participation on Tuesday. I, I the numbers know. are much higher on a Tuesday than they were on Saturday. So the reason that we changed it was we thought we'd get more people involved. Nobody wanted to talk about changing it back, and it's got to be voted off the floor. So as long as they like their smaller groups and Saturday meetings, you're stuck with it. And for next year, though, the select board could put that on the agenda, right? It could be voted on at town meeting about moving it back to Tuesday. And, yeah, back um, on the floor. On the floor, I would certainly support that. I think if people are prioritized, if they prioritize it and they come. So I I don't think there's many excuses for not coming on a Saturday. I think there's a lot. There's a lot. I think there's a lot. A lot of people have little kids. It was sugaring. All your sugar makers were out. Oil and you're not going to waste a day sitting there in Chandler when that's your money for the year, yeah. right? You got to make it while you can. There's well, there's a lot of things going on that were conflicts and. Well, I, I don't think I disagree. You know, I think yeah. I think you can day visitors. You can you can <laughs> leave for a couple of hours. You can you know you, you can. Can you shut down a fire? Yeah, for a couple hours. You shut can. Down your business. Well, so I think I, I think there's more than one person that's uh, doing that work. You know, should the sugaring part, if you if you want to talk about 
I think there's a lot of conflicts and I don't think, and that's why I think we should have looked harder at letting people vote when they could versus happen to be right there to vote. But I think unless there's compelling evidence, we have enough men not just ran up from other towns to show that moving to Saturday is more leads to greater turnout. Um, we go back to Tuesday, but if there's not evidence that Saturday is just better attended, it's um, we shouldn't be doing Saturdays. And I think we're talking even not just about the day of the week, it's the fact that the Australian ballot failed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, also, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. um, great treatment since there's back to Tuesday. Yeah, our numbers were much were higher. Not that they're very high to begin with, but you well, know, we had about 40, 45 people day. more. Yeah, that was on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, that's a little, so just said was what I just said. I mean, we had almost, but well, we had over 1,200 people. Well, we had 1,200 ballots, but the amount of people that came to town on Tuesday to vote. If they're coming to town, they're coming to town. I mean, I know that's over a 12-hour period. Right. But I mean, if you're, it'd be interesting if we capture the time. Because I think, like, oh, first yeah. thing when they open, there's quite a few before they go to work, right. and there's a fair number that are after work and noon time. So, but they could, they didn't have to make sure that it's 10 o'clock, like, right in the middle of your morning. Sure. Yeah. Can you, like, can you look at data of how many went through it? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's that days. smart. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it is for the straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have an AI. <laughs> when you find me mysteriously, yeah, beaten and battered, it's that exactly. the voting machine took it personally. <laughs> Show you how smart I am. Okay. Uh, so they also run out absentee ballots through when it's slow anyway. So the right. data went. They didn't do any until after. Well, they did this time. Then. That's true. This time they did not. Yeah, but so we would get the data on fair kind of when. Yeah. The easiest way might be when people check in. Um, if you printed the checklist in a way where you have a sort of a time mm -hmm. and people can take the a minute to just say it's you know, ten o six. 715, whatever it might be. But even the the people doing that might know when it was yeah, the having... busiest in these blocks. They said it was busy all day long. You people do. were coming through all day long because they didn't get a chance to do the absentee ballots like they normally do. Yeah. You, do you do see that there are bubbles yeah. um, when you'd expect them to. I mean, so I was looking for the, I had the statistics in my bag for when I went there, but when you're talking about what at the height of that, we had fewer than 90 people there, uh, 3,700 registered voters. So 75 people voted on whether to let everybody have a say or not. Yeah, and it was 40 something that made the decision. 40 to 35. So, and when we see that things are by Australian ballot, when we went all Australian ballot, both during COVID and just sort of at the tail end of it, participation numbers were up. Those were the highest voting percentage years in that five year block. <laughs> That we looked at so and we can't do anything until next year and next year we'd have to pick one or the other of like moving it to try and move it to tuesday or australian ballot well it sort of depends on what you want if you're going to try to move everything to australian ballot you still have to have so the big event out of all of this was that monday hearing that seven people came to that's the one that's statutorily required that was where we had all the information and that's sort of the chance you can have that at different moments. When I worked in Essex, we had it on the Monday before Tuesday voting. You just mm -hmm. have to have it within X number of days of town meeting. So you could use that as your town meeting functionally in terms of when people get together, have a chance to talk about stuff. Um, but you wouldn't keep the Tuesday floor meeting if everything's determined by Australian ballot because you wouldn't sort of jam those two pieces together. You got to have the informational meeting before you have the balloting, for example. I mean, yeah, the same there's some way to even do some, I, I mean, I didn't know that, obviously, so, like, is there information we can even just, like, somehow share out people some way ahead of time? You can still have your town meeting, right? You can still talk about all the mm -hmm. questions. You can still get the opinions. You can still have all that conversation, and they can still have their pie. But it's who gets a say and mm -hmm. the the topics that are not money related that was the big issue and 40 people thought we should have that so they did anything else from town meeting maybe more people come next time because of that vote i don't know 
been pretty late. <laughs> I wonder if anybody goes to the town meeting and actually changes their mind. I think everybody has their mind made up before they no, even no. go to the meeting. Several people stood up and said they've been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I was going back and forth and back and forth. I was. Yeah. I was. I said, oh, said. okay, okay. I oh, think. You, okay, yeah, well, a few people then, but it just seems like to me everybody has their mind made up before they even go. A fair number do it, probably. If they, and especially if they're informed. I mean, it is, like Trevor was saying, I think that meet previous meeting where you're really talking about the issues and, and stating the reason behind them is the key. Well, there was almost nobody at school. I know, either, that's so. the thing. Well, a couple of them were there for a different meeting. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 One guy sat politely yeah. through the whole thing. Like, oh, yeah, that's not what I came for. That's right, so we only had six people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on. Consider approving the annual VTrans financial form. I've got two of these here for you, folks to sign. Um, these are part of these annual requirements. So one is the annual financial plan. That's the TA-60. That's the one where we saw the numbers and the road miles. Basically where we certify that we spend more than $300 per mile. Like I mentioned to you, that's closer to $31,000. So I think we're good. We should get our money. Yeah. Uh, most towns vastly exceed that mark. I think it was set up in large part to make sure that we didn't just take state highway and use it to lower taxes, that we actually applied it to but I don't think the three hundred dollars has changed since it was set, and I don't know when it was set, but a while. Um, <laughs> and then we mentioned just a couple of projects. It, this one, I had one thing for this one. Is that we have to split it into winter maintenance and non-winter maintenance. Um, that's not how we budget. We do you know, we have our category set differently. So usually, what I do is take the what are clearly winter expenses, put them in their own category, split the other things 50 50 unless we have something that we know is a non-winter maintenance expense exclusively. That's how you get to those numbers that are split up like that and why they don't look like the categories in our budget. And up top, these are the calculations that get you to sort of by road mileage type, what we should receive back um, for Highway 8 on that. And then the other one is just cert certification of compliance with town road bridge standards network inventory. So we do have those inventories done at regular intervals by T Rourke. Um, we've got standards that are in place, um, they were adopted. Prior, I think, to that June 5th, 2019 one. Um, so we just certify that we do that. And just to make sure that we, you know, a lot of that's tied to the cold. It's really, I mean, making sure that you, you know, what condition they're in, where they're in, are they hydrologically connected to impaired waterways, or so that we've got a good replacement plan for that. So I think this one came about with some of the water quality, the MRGP FEMA. stuff. Yeah. That FEMA. FEMA. So those will just, if you adopt them, they will require signature of the jury, and then we'll get them off to the state. Do we need a motion or just signatures? A motion would be lovely. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to. Go out on a limb and say we can also apply for a class two paving grant. Those are due April 15th. We could do formal approval on the 11th when you meet, but I'm assuming you're okay with that. We were last year. Um, Beanville Road would be the target because we did parts of East Bethel, which was the target grant project last year. Um, and that was in our budgeting and capital programming conversation, too, that we go for that grant. Good them to be on. Consider approving the required VCDP forms for the grant. And every so often we have to do these standard forms that are required by the state. HUD requires it of them. Um, so this one's for the accessibility grant for the Friends of the Historic Playhouse. Uh, money's passing through us. Two Rivers is going to be the primary manager. They've got, I think, some passing in their own group. So we're fairly hands off. Jeff and Mark, have, I think Mark has done more of the coordination with them since it predates Jeff a little bit um, in the grants role. So we've listed two rivers. I have to be listed on there to my great enjoyment. Yeah. <laughs> the universe's way of having a little fun. Um, but same thing, it's set up as a resolution. 
there's a grant agreement that goes with it. There'll be a sub grant agreement with the friends of the historic playhouse that outlines what they're supposed to do um, and how they're supposed to do. It. And we have really been upfront with them, like we've been upfront with other pastors. Is we are we're conduit. You've got to do your own stuff. Um, and so that's certainly the intent. Okay, motion to approve that. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oops, I forgot to say I, but I forgot. Okay, I started reading. I forgot to say I. Uh, manager's report. Uh, we met with FEMA the other day. We're still working on the July storm event. We hope to see some money for three projects coming back soon. None of the real big ones, but for we brought some Jersey barriers. We had debris removal costs, and there was a small amount of work on Palmer Road. So all totaled, it's a little less than 50,000 bucks minus everybody's proportionate share. Don't have a timeline on that, but that's where that's at. And then trying to finish that up, so schedule site inspections. We got the 23 audit back, just got to finalize it. So at some point you'll get a presentation on that one. We'll have an RFP to present to you too here sooner than later. We've got to go back out for audit services. Mm -hmm. So best practice, it's time. And time on a couple of different levels. Um, there, uh, we've got mud, people calling about mud. People have been very nice about mud this year. I do appreciate it. I do want to note that for the record, they do call and make sure we're aware. Ask if there's anything we can do. They've been out, they're trying. John's crew has inverted the order when they put materials in certain places. They've gone with, I think, bigger stuff first and finds on top and we've changed some things and it's helped in spots, but at a certain point, the uh, master of earth sciences, but the mud does, what it wants to do at the end of the day. Um, the December storm events now FEMA eligible, so that was good news. We mentioned that earlier. The North Wells are federal earmark. We should have the application process over here within the next month or so, and that's how we'll actually access those funds. We're going to use those very specifically. It's a little easier if we target them right to the tank. So that new half million gallon reservoir tank, we'll just spend them right on that. And it works pretty nicely. And then our match will come out of our water supply loan. The state will take federal dollars, convert them to state dollars. We can use that as a match. So we save our sort of match capital for the Northern Borders grant, um, for example, which we're about to have extended through the end of September as well. So that project is still on track. We just got billed for tank storage, which is a good sign in that it means the tank is ready to come to us. A little unfortunate to have a bill for something sitting on a lot somewhere else, but <laughs> it's positive. I think those are in. I remember anything else. The nerd clusters are wearing off some of that energy splatter. <laughs> Sugar high. Yeah, now it's the crash. When I'm built like Scott, I can't I don't live this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any questions on the manager's report? None. Executive session. That's how much I don't know. It's too long, so we're not going to try. So we need, <laughs> we need to have two for this one. Um, one's the finding that it's necessary, prudent. So that's motion one, because a couple of these topics fall into the two. So when we go into executive session, we have to provide a reason why we do it and quote state law. And then some of the topics we need to find first that it's necessary. And then we enter with the topic listing. So that's why we have two. I forget, there's two or three of them that need that. Um, the contracts one, for example, pending probable litigation, those are all findings. Thank you, Thank you for your service. Motion one is finding that it's necessary and prudent and that premature general public knowledge would place the town at a disadvantage. So good. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, now it's the one to find that you need to enter as i mentioned in the report we've got one we want to just touch base on that's the pending probable litigation piece um so there are to consider a motion to enter executive session pursuant to i'm going to do you a favor here uh, one vsa 313 a1a that's for contracts um he is one VSA 313A1B for collective bargaining. We've got a union process coming up. Just want to touch base on that. 
Um, one VSA 313A1E, that's the pending probable litigation, and one VSA 313A2, which is real estate. Just want to check in on something that's best handled there. So moved. I'll take a second. <laughs> Right. I'm going to kick some folks off if they don't, and I'm going to just end the recording too. Recording stopped. I'm going to take a three minute break here. Real quick. Kick Orca out. Sorry, Orca.